Hello, my name is Mehdi Kordnavarsi and this is the third part of the chapter 2 about the key principle of software architecture. Let's start. We are going to talk a continuing subject about wide range of factors to ease of designing, implementing, deploying, testing, and maintaining the application. The first separate the area of concern. Break your application into distinct features that overlap in functionality as little as possible. The main benefit of this approach is that a feature or functionality can be optimized independently of other features or functionality. In addition, if one feature fails, it will not cause other features to fail, as well as they are, they can run independently of one another. This approach also helps to make the application easier to understand and design and facilitates management of complex interdependent systems. The next part is uh, be explicit about how layers communicate with uh, which, uh, each other, allowing every layer in an, uh, an application to communicate with or have dependencies upon all of the other layers will result in a solution that is more challenging to understand and manage. Make explicit decision about the dependencies between layers and the data flow between them. The next is use abstraction to implement loose coupling between layers. This can be accomplished by defi uh, defining interface components, Text. defining interface components such as the face with well-known inputs and outputs that translate requests into a format understood by components within the layer. In addition, you can also use interface types or abstract-based classes to define a common interface or share abstraction or dependency inversion. We say it dependency inversion that must be implemented by interface components. The next, do not mix different type of components in the same logical layer. Start by identifying different areas of concern and then group components associated with each area to confirm into logical layer. For example, the UI or user interface layer should not contain business processing components, but instead should contain components used to handle user input and process user requests. The next is keep the data format consistent within a layer or component. Mixing data formats will make the application more difficult to implement, extend, and maintain. Every time you need to convert data from one format to another, you are required to implement translation code to perform the operation and incur a processing overhead. Okay, let's see a short movie, three minutes, about the 
automated deployment solution uh, by the in re uh, release is a good technique for finding how to control the development uh, deployment process in release introductory video in the next three minutes we will demonstrate how in release provides continuous delivery to help .NET teams deliver early and deliver often your teams have transitioned to Agile, and you're now focused on delivering a continuous flow of value to customers. Unfortunately, there's often a missing component. In many cases, your release process requires you to go through a series of stages before getting to production. This can take days, weeks, or even months, preventing you from delivering immediate value to users. In fact, today applications are more complex to deploy than ever before. Human errors become inevitable, and common scripts are brittle and hard to maintain. Coordination communication issues often appear and further burden the process. The solution is a common platform for development, QA, and operations that fully automates the release cycle. That is what InRelease is and does. Let's take a closer look. InRelease does four things. First, it automates deployments directly from TFS to all environments, including production. This may include backups, generating test data, provisioning servers, or executing automated tests. Second, InRelease ensures that all deployments are done the same way, ensuring your deployment procedure has been tested over and over, removing release-related risks. Third, InRelease automates the approval workflow through all environments, reducing delays and coordination issues to an absolute minimum. Lastly, InRelease provides auditing to support compliance. Now, let's take a closer look at the application. As part of a deployment procedure, InRelease allows you to configure the installation and deployment of all your components on the various servers for each stage. By using drag and drop, you can simply move the items from the toolbox on the left to help you define your deployment procedure. To address simple and complex deployments, InRelease comes with a set of predefined actions for all Microsoft technologies. As an example, you can use an Azure action to deploy applications or components immediately to the cloud. You can also create and save custom actions as well. Leveraging predefined actions saves an incredible amount of time. Now let's see how InRelease manages workflow at each stage of deployment. As an approver, you first receive an email when an application is ready for testing. Once testing is complete, you can approve or reject the version. Note, you also have the option to reassign the task. If necessary, the approver can also view version components, build information, and the deployment workflow. From here, the approver can see what's been done, what's still to come, and who's next in the approval process. Finally, you can view and track deployment history. With respect to integration, InRelease is designed and built for Visual Studio. For example, InRelease deploys from TFS with team build and leverages TFS security groups. It can also run automated tests using Microsoft Test Manager. InRelease can run provision and deploy to Azure. With InRelease, TFS builds are approved and tracked all the way up to production. Finally, InRelease supports all common Microsoft technologies. InRelease provides faster release cycles, saves time and lowers deployment costs, delivers consistent and robust releases, and supports compliance requirements. Most importantly, InRelease allows you to maximize your agile investments and deliver timely value to customers. Okay, in the next First step, we will concentrate on components, modules, and function confirms. The first a component or an object should not rely on internal details of other components or objects. Each component or object should call a method of another object or component. And that method should have information about how to process the request and, if appropriate, how to route it to appropriate subcomponents or other components. This helps to create an application that is more maintainable and adaptable. The next concern do not overload the functionality of a component. For example, a user interface processing component should not contain data access code 
or attempt to provide additional functionality. Overload components often have many functions and properties providing business functionality mixed with cross-cutting functionality such as logging and exception handling. The result is a design that is very error prone and difficult to maintain. Applying the single responsibility and separation of concerned principles will help you to avoid this. The next concern, understand how components will communicate with each other. This requires an understanding of the deployment scenarios your application must support. You must determine if all components will run within the same process or if communication across physical or processes boundaries must be supported, perhaps by implementing message-based interfaces. The next concern is cheap cross-cutting code abstracted from the application business logic as far as possible. Cross-cutting code refers to code related to security, communications, or operational management such as logging and in in instrumentation. Mixing the code that implements these functions with the business logic can lead to a design that is difficult to extend and maintain. Change to the cross-cutting code require touching all of the business logic code that is mixed with the cross-cutting code. Consider using frameworks and techniques such as aspect-oriented programming that can help to manage cross-cutting concerns. We will talk about these factors cross-cutting concerns. The next, define a clear contract for components. Components, modules, and functions should define a contract or protocol or interface, a specification that describes their usage and behavior clearly. The contract should describe how other components can access the internal functionality of the component, module, or function, and the behavior of that functionality in terms of preconditions, postconditions, side effects, exceptions, performance characteristics, and other factors. In the past, when communication was simple and data amount limited, providing IT services was straightforward. Unfortunately, those days are gone. Today, IT services are gigantic efforts and a major challenge for IT operations. They're in the cloud and on-premise include many interrelated data paths from different sources, serve many device types, utilize an infinite number of apps, and are managed by dozens of different tools. Today, with services creating trillions of bytes of data that consume immense storage space and triggering a growing amount of events every day, IT personnel have only seconds to identify developing problems and even less time to decide which ones are escalating towards a disruption of business or even worse, a personal
perfect storm. In today's IT-reliant business world, a one-hour network outage in service can cost hundreds of millions of dollars in damage and reputation. And while services are collapsing, IT operations often do not have the proper means to find the source of the problem and fix it before complete mayhem sets in. There is a better way. Introducing HP Operations Analytics, Big Data Analytics for IT operations. At HP, we've taken over 25 years of experience in managing IT operations, coupled with industry-leading new technologies, and put it to hard work. Creating a new, innovative solution to help you oversee your IT service delivery and avoid the next perfect storm. First, HP Operations Analytics helps you prepare. It collects everything that happens in your network, storing the information for later use in a system which understands it. Then, HP Operations Analytics allows you to predict. By using predictive analytics, it identifies dangerous trends as they happen, predicting potential service disruptions and allowing intervention before they become major issues. And finally, HP Operations Analytics allows you to pinpoint. If serious events begin unfolding, HP Operations Analytics provides an IT time machine that allows you to replay history and recreate the events which caused the outage. By using attractively powerful visualizations, IT personnel can track the course of history, drilling down and isolating troubles in time and in context helping them pinpoint root causes and allowing them to prevent future disasters. HP Operations Analytics. Big Data Analytics for IT Operations. Okay, let's have a quick overview for the rest of the this chapter. Key Design Configuration. This guide describes the major decisions that you must make and which help to ensure that you consider all of the important factors as you begin and then iteratively develop your application architectural design. The major decisions briefly described in the following scenarios are Determine the application type. Determine the deployment strategy. Determine the appropriate technologies. And determine the quality attributes. And determine the cross-cutting concerns. In the next movie, we will discuss in detail about all of the mentioned key design consideration. Thank you.